The Amazing Spider-Man, a film that I haven't actually seen in about eight or nine years or so, and I decided to give it another rewatch to give it another shot. And wow, this film still holds up. And it's a pretty damn good origin for Peter Parker. Before we go any further, I did a written review of this movie on Lala's Discord server, and I received 40 points on my Real Rewards program with Lala. I'm almost at 100 points now in my Real Rewards program, and when I hit 500, I could turn those points in for an AMC movie ticket. That's pretty awesome in my opinion. Links to Lala's Discord server and the Real Rewards program is in the description. Go check them out. When I first watched The Amazing Spider-Man all those years ago, of course I was comparing it to Toby's first Spider-Man film because I was trying to see the differences in what they were going to be doing differently here. And I will have to say, I did that to an extent here again doing the rewatch, but... It came from a different perspective because, of course, after No Way Home, seeing Toby, Andrew, and Tom together, like that to me changes a lot of things in terms of what the story could have been later on. But I think the foundation, what they were doing here, they wanted to be true to what Peter Parker was. And I felt like in the Toby's first film, Spider Man wise, they did a pretty damn good job, in my opinion, in terms of the origin and setting up him becoming Spider Man. And so for here, for The Amazing Spider Man, they were doing the same thing, but trying to showcase a different perspective a different light if you will because first of all we open with the mystery of his parents and i think that was really interesting and a different approach and then on top of that too we could have easily dove into norman osborne which was kind of hinted at in terms of the locations and where we're being at and everything like that in terms of characters and all that kind of stuff however it's dr kurt connors aka the lizard is the villain of the film because they are hinting at norman but no, we're actually focusing on the lizard here. And I think that was really great because of the connection Peter has to him because of Connor's connection to Peter's parents. It really added more drama, more intensity to those moments, especially when he becomes the lizard, because I felt like it was more of a struggle for Peter, Spider-Man, to overcome this. Because, yes, fighting Green Goblin is one thing, or fighting certain other villains is one thing in terms of learning that process when you just became Spider-Man. But fighting a gigantic lizard, a dinosaur, if you will, like, it's a very different thing. Now, I know the Spider-Man 90s animated series started out with Peter Parker fighting the lizard. So I like the fact that, like, they may have looked at that, the 90s animated show, and said, okay, let's do this with this origin of this new Spider-Man. But I felt like they did a pretty damn good job, first of all, with the actual action sequences. And the design of the lizard, yes, and the face is a little odd but i think it makes sense because he's going to be talking i mean you could have made it work i think without you know the the certain design of the structure they went with the face of the lizard but i'm also okay with the design because there's many different ways they could have actually went with the face of the lizard because there's many different interpretations of what the lizard looks like so i'm okay with it uh but it, it really worked out i think overall in terms of a great origin like gigantic you know villain hero type situation here with spider-man fighting the lizard emma stone's gwen stacy of course we know what happens in the sequel i think she was introduced pretty well here i will say though as i rewatched the film because I, I remember bits and pieces that stood out from the first for the first time watching it of course all these years ago we are watching it I think she's great as Gwen. I think she's a great addition to the film. I think she's doing a pretty good job. And I like the chemistry, of course, because they had chemistry, her and Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker, because they actually dated in real life because of working together on these movies. However, I wish she was in it a little more. Like, I understand that you're trying to find that balance because you also have to have the Uncle Ben and especially the Aunt May side of it and everything. But I wish she had more involvement in certain elements of the story like she's in it a pretty decent portion but i feel like they could have maybe included her more into it i feel like they maybe would have added more depth to their building of their relationship to the point where they actually end up towards the end of the film of course things kind of fall apart when you actually get to the ending of the movie but you get what i'm saying i feel like that there could have been maybe a little bit more now as i mentioned the uncle ben and aunt may stuff i think the uncle ben stuff worked I really felt like they maybe could have had him a little bit more in the movie, in my opinion. And, of course, that means extending the runtime. But I feel like they could have maybe had him a little bit longer in the actual movie itself. And then having that moment, the moment we all know is coming, having that be more impactful to the viewer. Now, obviously, we all know, even if you're just a casual Marvel fan, we all know the Uncle Ben story. We all know what happens. But I feel like in this instance, 
it, it is impactful after rewatching it again, but I feel like it would have been more impactful if we would have spent more time with him and everything. Now, the fallout with Ant-Man and everything like that was some pretty dark stuff, and I feel like that really worked with the movie too and add, in terms of adding the dramatic elements. But I feel like we could have spent a little bit more time with Uncle Ben. It's not really a surprise, but Andrew Garfield, in my opinion, does a great job as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. I think the quips when he's Spider-Man is pretty great. And what I also appreciate about this is that for a time when he's Spider-Man, he's not actually going out and really saving the day. He's just going out trying to find the guy that could Uncle Ben. Versus Toby's first film, of course, that comparison again, like it's pretty quick. You know, it kind of happens pretty fast, the turnaround of that. In this... It's more so he needs to realize there's more I can do here than just what I'm doing now in terms of just trying to find this guy. Now he's going around taking out you know bad guys and all that kind of stuff, but he's not really doing it to save others. He's really doing it just trying to find that one guy. That's what he's doing. That's what really matters to him. So I like the fact that we have that moment because of course, Peter's in a really bad spot, a really bad place mentally. And he has his powers and he has his abilities, but he's not thinking the bigger picture. He's thinking what's right in front of him in terms of getting revenge or getting payback for what occurred to Uncle Ben. I like the fact that there's a turning point, but it takes time. It's not immediate. And so I think that was an interesting approach to kind of switch it up to where he's Spider-Man, yes, but he's not really saving people to save them. He's just trying to find the guy. <laughs> That's what he's trying to do. So I think that was a pretty good thing that they kind of handled in the movie. Now, obviously with this rewatch, I do plan on rewatching The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'm assuming that's going to go bad. Pretty obvious. But I will say that this film, The Amazing Spider-Man, is a great origin for Peter. Great uh, build up in terms of the lizard and him being the main villain in this first uh, film. And the fact that, of course, his connection to Connors, like Peter and Connors' connection to the film, then of course the turning point in the movie where Connors is obsessed and of course becoming the lizard and getting stronger and his plans and everything and his really insane plan of course at the end. But I also felt like too, it worked because of Connors' connection to Peter's parents. I felt like that was the turning point um, for it because it wasn't like Peter just came across Connors and went, oh okay, we're both into science, let's, let's hang out. Like It's because Connors knew Peter's parents and he wants to know what happened, what's going on. So I feel like that was great for the film because that added more tension, more drama to both of them and made things more hectic, if you will. So overall, this is a great film in terms of setting up Peter Parker's origin and Andrew Garf Garfield, like I was saying, great job as Peter Parker's Spider-Man. It is unfortunate that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 goes downhill uh, from here because I feel like there could have been some really great stories they could have told with this version. Now, obviously, they hinted at some stuff in No Way Home that happened after we see the events of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but it seems like we're never going to be seeing the continuation of his uh, story and what's happening, but we do get some insight in No Way Home, but... You know, I don't feel like we're going to get The Amazing Spider-Man 3. There's a lot of rumors that maybe Sony's Sony Spider-Man or Spider-Less universe or whatever with Kraven and Venom and all this kind of stuff and Madam Web is going to tie into Andrew Garfield's um, Spider-Man. I don't know if that's true or legit. It's possible, but um, but as of right now, as I'm making this video, there's nothing that we know of for sure that's happening. So, yeah, so this is this overall still a fun ride, still a fun film to check out and watch. And I'm glad that I rewatched after so long because I forgot a good portion of this movie, to be honest with you. But it was still a fun ride. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out.